going to demonstrate the abdominal examination for a newborn baby. Before I began by actually touching the baby, of course, I would auscultate the abdomen to ascertain the presence of normal bowel sounds, uh, which I will not demonstrate uh, for you uh, at this moment. I would then uh, look at the baby's abdomen, having exposed it by opening the diaper so I can see the uh, abdominal wall in its entirety. Uh, this baby has a normal abdomen that is full. It is neither scaphoid nor distended. It's not taut, and I don't see any visible bowel loops. So a very normal appearing uh, abdomen uh, and uh, good color and perfusion of the overlying skin. I can then proceed to examine the abdomen, and I start very gently by determining the presence uh, position of the costal margin here, which I can put my fingers on there, uh, with my left hand, and with my right hand starting right down in the baby's right uh, lower quadrant, all the way down at the level of the iliac crest, gently pushing in and moving my fingers gradually, superiorly, towards the costal margin and where I expect to find the edge of the liver. If you don't start low enough, if you have an enlarged liver, you'll simply push the liver posteriorly and you'll not feel the edge. But if you start low enough and work your way up, you will eventually encounter the edge of the liver, which I can now feel about one centimeter below the costal margin here in a very normal position. And then I can trace that edge of the liver across the midline over towards the left side and often I'm able to feel the inferior margin of the left lobe of the liver underneath the left costal margin, which I'm finding right here with my left middle finger at this point. Maybe hard to feel the edge of the liver here behind the rectus abdominis muscles, but I can feel this liver in a very normal position and of a very normal size and consistency. I then would move on to looking for the presence of the spleen. Again, I want to locate the position of the costal margin, and then I start very low down in the left iliac fossa and gently move my fingers superiorly looking for the tip of the spleen, typically finding it just within the uh, margins uh, of the uh, rib cage right here. And in this case, with this little girl, I'm not able to feel the tip of her spleen, which doesn't mean that it's absence. It just means that it's normally small and difficult to feel. And while I'm here in the left upper quadrant, I can continue to feel for the presence of the left kidney. If it is enlarged because of uh, cystic kidney disease, uh, or if there is a flank mass, like you might get from an adrenal hemorrhage or a neuroblastoma, you'll be able to feel it up here in the left upper quadrant. And for this little girl, I'm barely able to palpate the inferior tip of the left kidney. Feels very normal. I then reposition my hands to the other side, again using my left hand to gently slide posteriorly, uh, just below the edge of the ribs and above the iliac crest there, and then compress from anteriorly, again looking for the presence of that uh, liver, uh, I'm sorry, kidney in between uh, my fingers. And here I can just feel the inferior pole of the right kidney uh, right behind my middle finger uh, of my right hand and in front of the middle finger of my left hand. Uh, so those kidneys feel uh, very normal, uh, no flank masses, nothing enlarged in there. And finally, uh, we move on to looking for uh, a full uh, distended bladder. Uh, I like to secure the baby's uh, legs with this hand and use my thumb and forefinger of the other hand. Remember that the bladder is a pelvic organ, but if it's full, distended, uh, it will feel uh, like a small tennis ball uh, sitting here in the lower part of the abdomen. And you can gently uh, squeeze from the upper corners uh, and find that distended bladder in there. And as you can see here, this baby is allowing me to palpate into that area without any sense at all of the bladder being distended.